Thank you. What a pleasure it is to be here with our brothers and sisters in Christ and, and uh, be able to worship and enjoy uh, singing praises to, uh, to our Father this morning. We're, uh, we're excited about everyone being here, especially our visitors. If you're visiting with us today, there's, uh, I'm going to give you a choice. You can either fill out the yellow card on the back of the pew in front of you and just hand it to somebody that kind of looks like they know what they're doing and that would be one of our regular members, and hand it to them, or you can leave it sitting on the pew, or look at your uh, uh, bulletin, and on the back there's a QR code. Y'all impressed that I knew QR code this time, right? So there's a QR code that you can scan that, and you'll fill it out online, and that'll be sent to the appropriate place. So uh, make sure you do that. Our regular members, if you would, fill out a white card. And just, you can leave it where it's sitting. Or if you'll go online to the Realm Act app, uh, Derek sends out a kind of a check-in that you can do that. If you're not already on the Realm app, then I suggest that you, uh, you get with Derek or Chris or someone that uh, knows what they're doing that can get you signed up for that. It's, it's really a wonderful thing. Uh, and, and not only through that, you, you also have everyone's phone numbers through that app. You can look up on your phone and if I need someone's phone number, I can just, boom, it's right there. Um, so anyway, we're happy to have everyone here. If you look at your bulletin, and there's quite a few people on the uh, prayer list that uh, we want to remember in prayer, we're, uh, I have no additions to that or no updates to that, uh, but we do want to make sure that we remember those in our prayers. At the end of worship, I'll have a few other announcements uh, to give, but uh, as we begin, let's, let's begin in prayer. Let's pray together. Most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this opportunity to come before your throne. We're thankful, Father, because we know that you're our King, and we know, Father, that you hear our prayers. We pray, Father, for this worship service today. We pray that our intent will be to please you. We pray, Father, that we'll uh, use your word to guide every step that we take. We have so many, Father, on the uh, uh, prayer list that we know that you're aware of who they are. We pray that you'll... Uh, guide them through their procedures, through their uh, um, uh, their healing, and and all of the things will go go well with them. We especially, Father, pray for H. D. Hood. We uh, know that he's not been able to be with us because of the clots. We just pray, Father, that you'll continue to uh, to be with him. We pray, Father, for uh, Loretta Ellis, Casey Hurley, Vic Kelly. We pray for Josephine uh, Gardner. Pray, Father, for Jimmy Barr's upcoming uh, test. We, Father, we pray for uh, Malcolm Barnett. We pray for all the things that uh, that that you've made us aware of that we can uh, remember these people, and we, and we know, Father, that we can uh, bring their names to you, and and you will uh, you'll give us comfort. We thank you again, Father, for the people that are working here in, uh, at Sowell that helps for things to go smoothly. We just pray, Father, again, that you'll help us this day to help us to worship you in, in spirit and truth. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I told Chris we were going to sing number 406 first, and he forgot to tell you. <laughs> Song number 406, Go Worship the King. We'll sing all three verses. Go worship the King.
68. Heavenly sunlight. This will be our song before our opening prayer. <clears throat> Walking in sunlight. reading will be coming from Luke, the 41st verse through the 50th verse. His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. When they had finished the days, as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother did not know, know it. But supposing him to have been in, in the company, they went a day's journey and saw him among their relatives and acquaintances. So when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem, seeking him. Now so it was that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And he said to them, Why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we come before thee as humble as we know how. Thank you for another opportunity, Father, to petition that throne of grace. We thank you, Father, for Jesus Christ. Thank you for the sacrifice that he made on the cross, Father, so that we one day, Father, can receive eternal life. We thank you, Father, for the church which he purchased with his blood. We thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit, Father, which guided and protected the word. Dear Father, we pray that you are Bless this congregation, Father. Pray that you would strengthen us, Father, in those areas, Father, where we have need. We pray, Father, you just continue to bless the work that we do, Father, here throughout the community, Father, as we try to reach those uh, lost souls. I want to remember the ones, Father, on our prayer list, Father, for they have different ailments, Father. And we just pray, Father, that they that you'll comfort them at this time, Father, and that they may be restored to a good portion of their health and strength. We want to pray for our leaders, Father. Pray, Father, that they will continue to be encouraged, Father, as they continue, Father, to keep watch, Father, over the way of being in this congregation. The Father, I want to pray for our deacons, Father, for Gary, Derek, Logan, uh, our teachers, Father. We thank you, Father, for their willingness, Father, 
that they have, Father, to take on uh, the various responsibilities that they have. We pray, Father, that they too will continue to be encouraged, Father, they continue to labor in that work. Pray, Father, that you will be with us throughout the Father's Father and so this service, Father, we love you. We thank you for all you do for us. Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our next song will be number 308. 308. Neil <clears throat> Kneel at the cross of Christ, believe you there.
Good morning. What a joy to be together as always. A blessing to be here. I know there's some watching online. I had at least one uh, talk to me earlier and said they'd have to keep doing that because of the illness they're confronting. And I understand that because of all else that's going on. But we're glad they're able to be with us some way. And we're sure glad that you're able to be here in person. Once again, we're blessed with some visitors, and we want you to know you're our honored guest. We're going to do our best to make you feel that way. If you'll give us an opportunity, just stay around a few minutes following the dismissal prayer, and and we will be sure to greet you, and hopefully uh, you'll realize this is a good family, and you'll want to be a part of this good family. I wonder if I asked every Christian in the audience today, do you walk every day with Jesus? Are you on a journey every day with Jesus? I wish I could say in my lifetime that I have succeeded every day in taking a journey with Jesus. But I've got to be honest with you, I've not always succeeded in that. There have been days when, oh, I may have known that I should make a journey with Jesus, but I just didn't achieve that. I didn't live the way that I ought to live in order to be walking with Him, in order to be journeying with Him. I thought it might be good, uh, because of that, uh, to look this morning at a point in the life of Jesus where his family made a day's journey without Jesus. Now, they didn't do it on purpose, and we'll see that in just a few moments, but maybe that points to something that we all need to realize, that to journey with Jesus is a purposeful thing. It's a thing that involves a daily commitment on my part, a resolution on my part to live with Jesus and walk with Jesus every day. What lessons can we see in this? You heard read just a few moments ago the incident that took place. It is interesting to notice that in the very opening verse, Luke chapter 2, verse 41, we discover that it was the habit of his parents to go to Jerusalem. So if anybody ever asks you, how many times did Jesus go to Jerusalem? You may say like I will, well, I don't know exactly how many, but I can be assured of this. Judging by what we know in Scripture, he went at least to every feast that a Jewish male was supposed to go to. He was there on every occasion. They went every year. It may not have been easy for them. It may not have been within their budget, so to speak, but they went anyway. Luke picks up the story in regard to one specific time. When Jesus, at the age of 12, went with his parents to the city of Jerusalem, to the feast on that occasion. And when he did, unfortunately, we can see, number one, they were separated from Jesus. Listen to it. Go back to that that you heard read just a few moments ago. His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. When they had finished the days, as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered in or behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother did not know it. I like to underline in my Bible, and I, I, I sometimes pick up on what I've studied in days gone by by what I underline. Guess what I did not underline here? Did not know it. But as I think about it today, that's a very, very important point for all of us, isn't it? 
And that is that it's perfectly possible for me and for you to go about our daily lives and not be journeying with Jesus, but also not know it. Not recognize that fact. Not realize it. I think we've got to make a conscious effort to be sure Jesus is with us. They apparently assumed he was with them. Maybe you and I live our lives assuming that Jesus is with us, but we don't need to do that. We need to be sure that he is with us. They made a day's journey in which they were separated from Jesus. Why? Well, the next verse tells me exactly what I just said. Listen to verse 44. But supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. They made a supposition. I can tell you about making a supposition. Maybe you can too. I remember one day I was going to, uh, up to uh, Olive Branch. I was going to video for a gospel broadcasting network. Uh, as I sometimes do when I'm on the way, I, I made a stop at a gas station, convenience store. And while I was in there, I thought, you know what, I, I, I think today I'd like to have a drink. And so I got my bottle of probably Dr. Pepper, something like that. <laughs> and I went to the counter and reached in my pocket for my wallet. Guess what? It was not there. I supposed it was. It is out of 365 days a year for as long as I've been here. Why, I can think of about one time it wasn't there. Guess when that was? That trip. Now, for the next number of miles, what I spent my time figuring out was, how am I going to get back home? Because my car won't go all the way to Olive Branch and come back on one tank of gas. And I began to think, who can I borrow money from until I can get them paid back? Suppositions can lead to trouble, can't they? And they certainly can re lead to trouble in reference to Jesus. Just supposing that he's with me is not good enough. In fact, in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, the wise man says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Yeah, I may think I'm on the right path, but if I'm on the wrong path, it's going to lead to eternal separation from God. How am I going to avoid that? I think the answer is found in Acts chapter 17. The Apostle Paul has already been to Thessalonica. He's preached the word there. Some people have obeyed, but there were some pretty strong responses in the negative in Thessalonica. Paul now moves on to the city of Berea, and Luke makes this observation. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and search the Scriptures daily whether those things were so. How am I going to make sure that I'm not walking separated from Jesus? I'm going to have to search the Scripture. I'm going to have to diligently study and make sure that I am walking with Jesus. That's not the only thing that we can observe. When they realized the problem, they were filled with anxiety. Listen, as you heard read a few moments ago, listen again, beginning in verse 45. So when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Now, so it was that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, 
son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you, hear the word, anxiously. I propose to you today that the value that you place on a thing or on a person determines how diligently you seek for them. It determines the amount of anxiety you'll have when you don't have it, when you're not with them. I don't know about you, but I, in days gone by, I took our children when they were small into, oh, some store, and it seemed like just seconds ago they were right here. The next thing I know, they're not right there. And how do you respond to that? Well, I don't know about you, but I'm looking all over the place, trying to figure out where they are. I go into a panic. Did somebody get them? Uh, are, are they hurt? Uh, where are they? I don't know. Mary and Joseph were anxious. They were filled with anxiety. And for us today, don't you think that if we, if we somehow come to the realization that we're not walking with Jesus, that we ought to be, be anxious about it? That we ought to again seek Him to try to find Him so that we will be where He is? I mean, think about it. When we're separated from Christ, what is our condition? The Apostle Paul, writing to the brethren at Ephesus in Ephesians chapter 2, writes about it in verse 12 when he's talking to the Gentiles. And here's what he says to them. That at that time, now this is the time when they were without God. They were outside the law. Listen to him. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. You and I have been there when either we or somebody we love has gone through a medical test. And I can tell you the words that I don't want to hear. There's no hope. This is it. There's no hope. Now, I've been there with brethren and friends, loved ones, when they heard that. But I don't want to hear it. And if I don't want to hear that just about this life, which is limited anyway, it's going to come to an end one day. If I feel that way about this life, how should I feel about the next life? If I today am walking without Jesus, I need to have a sense of anxiety. I need to realize that I am hopeless. I'm hopeless in regard to eternity. I'm hopeless in regard to spending my time after this life with God Almighty and with Jesus Christ, His Son. But here's the good news. Jesus wants us to be with Him. You know how I know this? It's because of the letter to the Laodiceans. The church at Laodicea was... Well, if it was an example of anything, it was an example of how not to do it. Revelation chapter 3. Let me just read about them. There's not really a good comment made about this church. Not one. And yet, listen to what Jesus tells them in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, and opens the door. I will come into him and dine with him, and he with me. I like especially one word there, anyone. Anyone. It's not that Jesus will not walk with you, or he will not walk with me. 
He says, if anyone opens their heart to me, I'll walk with them. We don't have to spend a day in anxiety like they did because they journeyed without Jesus. But then further, I want to make a, just one of those observations that you get from the whole text. They left him, not he them. When I was a little boy, my dad went to, uh, to Yuma, Arizona. And you don't talk about a place that is in, in a desolate spot. That's it. It is in the desert. Just outside of California, into the, the state of, of Arizona. And I remember, even now, I can close my eyes and think about what happened that day. I got ready early. Uh, I knew how to get ready for services. I was old enough, you know, to get, get all, all ready. It was the evening time. We'd already been there that morning. We're going back now. We're staying with this family that afternoon. And while we waited, uh, they, they didn't mind. I went in to the, the bedroom where they had their little uh, poodles, and I, I played with the dogs. And I played with the dogs, and I played with the dogs, and I thought, man, it, it's been a while. And I went and opened the door, and the house was dark. And I went out in the driveway, and guess what? No cars. Everybody was gone. You talk about anxiety. I didn't even go back in the house. I sat down on the curb. I thought, they'll come back for me. Well, they did. But it was after everything was over. <laughs> they left me. I didn't leave them, not that time. But here's the reality. When you talk about Mary and Joseph, they left Jesus. They left him in Jerusalem, didn't they? He was with them. They knew where he was. But they left him. They didn't verify that he now was still with them and going their way. Now what about you and what about me? Have we stopped to consider? I'm talking about even today. So, well, look, I'm in the church building. That doesn't mean you're with Jesus. Doesn't mean I am either. If I'm focused on everything else that's going on around me, I may have already left Jesus. You may have already left Jesus. It certainly happened in the lifetime of Jesus. Look at John chapter 6, verse 66. Jesus has been delivering some, frankly, there's some of the most difficult teachings in all of his teachings. Even today, I can say that myself. These people heard these teachings, and, and as they heard them, they, they really weren't happy about what he was saying. And so in verse 66, John reports, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. It, in their case, was a conscious choice, wasn't it? They didn't like something he said. They didn't like the doctrine that he was presenting, and because of that, they consciously walked away from Jesus and never came back. I'm not accusing anybody here today of consciously going away from Jesus, but if we're separated from him, I know who moved. It wasn't Jesus. It was me. Or it was you. Now the good news right after what happened is what happens next. Because in John chapter 6, Verse 67, Jesus, and you've got to wonder, was he a little bit dejected? 
I don't know the answer to that, but I'd like to know. Maybe when we get to heaven, we can find out. Here's what happens. He says to the twelve, Do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You know, usually when we talk about the confession of Peter, we're talking about Matthew 16, aren't we? But here is the second time that he confesses Jesus. And when he does so this time, he says, that's why we're not going anywhere. Now, to everybody here today, me included, we need to realize that Jesus still has the words of life. That Jesus is still the Son of God. That he is still the means of access into heaven itself. He is the way he is the truth. He is the life. No one goes to the Father except by Jesus. So what do I need to do? I need to make sure I don't leave him. Because I know he won't leave me. But then there's one more thing. And that is they had to go back to him. Look at the last couple of verses. We've already, they've already found him. They went back to Jerusalem. They found him in the temple. And listen to that exchange that takes place there. Verses 49 and 50 of Luke 2. He said to them, Why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. If you've got to go back to Jesus, where do you have to go? If you think about it, it's pretty easy, isn't it? He's going to be in the light. When John writes about it in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, he says, but if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. The He, in that passage, is, of course, the Father. But if you've read all the verses leading up to that, the Son's there too. And there they are in the light. They're available to us. They're always at ready access. But if I have left Him, if you have left Him, how are we going to get back to Him? We're going to have to go back to Him. He's already come for our sakes. He's not going to come looking for you in that sense of the word day, you're going to have to go and find Him. He's left you the path. He's left you the way. He's left me the way. We can do it. There's an example of this in the book of Acts. It's Acts chapter 8. It's the story of a fellow that we often call Simon the Sorcerer because that's the way Luke identifies him. Simon is in the city of Samaria. He is, well, he's a pretty notable fellow, to be honest about it. He's had a lot of power. He's exercised a lot of control over people. He did it by magical arts, deceiving them, but he had control. <clears throat> when Philip came to that city, he preached the gospel. And the people released, as it were, themselves. They, they separated themselves from the control of, of Simon the sorcerer. And now they obeyed the gospel and they put themselves under the control of Jesus Christ. But here is the remarkable news. Simon did too. Simon learned the gospel and he obeyed the gospel. And apparently... For at least a period of time, he walked faithfully with Jesus. But then one day, Peter and John were sent by the other apostles to go to Samaria, and their purpose was to make sure that all these people 
who had obeyed the gospel had miraculous gifts. And you can only get miraculous gifts by the laying on of the apostles' hands. And Simon sees that. And when he sees it, well, I don't know about you, but I see dollar signs pop up in his eyes. He's like, whoa, you know, I thought I had control before, but if I could have this, I can really be in control. And so he tries to buy the ability to pass on the miraculous gifts to others. Peter's response, in part, according to Luke, in Acts chapter 8, verse 22, is this. Repent, therefore, of this your wickedness, and pray God if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. Repent. Yesterday, <clears throat> I took Teresa out. She's, you know, she just like everybody else. She likes to get out every now and then. We went and found a place to eat, and we got out of that place. I thought, well, I'm going to go out. It's, it's easier to go down here because traffic's less. Well, boy, that was a mistake. It usually is less, but not, not yesterday. I didn't know what in the world was going on, but there were uh, everybody, it seemed like to me, everybody in, in all of the Jackson area for a little while was you turning and it's, it was just down from where I'm trying to get on the road. And, you know, every time I think I can get on, here comes another one. You turn, you turn, you turn. By the way, what does it mean to you turn? Does it mean you're going this way and you have to go that way? Isn't that a U turn? Well, I found out what happened. The police had blocked off. You couldn't go across the road, you had to go down and make a U-turn to be able to go where you're going. That's why they were all doing it. That explained it, but, but friends, brethren, if you leave Jesus, there's only one way to get back to Him. You've got to make a U-turn. And that's what repentance really is, isn't it? It's turning from going away from Jesus and turning back to walk with Him. That's what it's all about. Peter wants Simon to know you can come back to Jesus, but you are in a heap of trouble if you don't. We've already referred to the church at Laodicea, the letter to them. There's another letter that Jesus wrote. He wrote this to the church at Ephesus. By the end of the first century, Ephesus was the stronghold of Christianity. Not Jerusalem. Remember, they'd largely been driven out of Jerusalem. Not Rome, although there'd be people that want to tell you it was Rome. It wasn't Rome. It was Ephesus. A great church. And maybe for good reason. I mean, Paul has spent an extended amount of time there. Paul has sent Timothy to work there. He did. He, elders had been ordained in that place. They were, they were following according to exactly the prescription that, that is out there for the church. And yet, listen to the letter written to them. Now, by the way, this letter is not filled with all negative. It starts off with a lot of positive, Revelation chapter 2, the very opening verse. But by the time you get to verse 4, listen to what Jesus says. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you've left your first love. Now, brethren, this Siwa Road is a great church. Siwa Road has done a lot of good things. But did you know it's possible that this building can be full of people and we've left our first love? It's possible. Not pretty. Not what we want. But it is possible. So what do we do if we're there? Well, listen, because Jesus gives the remedy in the very next verse. Remember, therefore... 
from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I'll come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Twice he said, come back. Come back to me. Come back to the original things that you were involved in. Now, I want everybody in this audience who is a, a child of God to think about something, and please think very carefully and seriously about it. When you first obeyed the gospel, what did you want to do? Everybody I've ever seen obey the gospel immediately wants to get somebody else to, to come with them. And in some ways, you could say it's illustrated in in the very beginning of the book of John. When Andrew finds Jesus, what does he do? He first goes and finds his brother and he brings him. When Philip finds Jesus, what does he do? He first goes and gets Nathaniel and brings him. I imagine that just about everybody in here who is a child of God started off wanting everybody they knew and loved to be with us on this walk. Are we still there? Everybody's supposed to have one of these cards. Hopefully in your Bible, that's the easiest way to locate it. On it is supposed to be a list of names, people you want to see in heaven. When's the last time you thought about praying about these people on this list? When's the last time you tried to open up a conversation with them? You see, it's possible for people who love Jesus, and I think Mary and Joseph loved Him dearly, it's possible to walk a day's journey or more without Him. It happens, and when it happens, we're separated from Jesus. If we realize it will create anxiety within us, there's no doubt about that. But we've got to recognize that we left Him. He didn't leave us. He's still right where He was. And if we want to walk with Him again, we've got to turn around Go back to Jesus, and He'll be there for us. Now, if you're outside of Christ, you've still got to make a turn. When you make that turn of repentance, Peter says very simply, the next thing you've got to do, be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins. It's available to you too. Everybody in this audience today can leave here knowing that you and that I, that we are walking with Jesus. If you see, though, that you've stumbled and you're not, don't wait. Go find Him. Come while we sing.
634. 634. final days of Jesus' life, it was time for the Passover. Jesus wanted to celebrate the Passover, of course, with the disciples. Now, the Passover was a special time. It was a tradition. Special cups were used for the occasion. Food was a part of an ancient menu that symbolized the important events in the Israelites' history. It was a religious service as well as a feast. There were songs and prayers. But the meal, it was called a seder, meaning an orderly ceremony. It was at the meal that Jesus would give new symbolism to the wine and the bread. The wine was traditionally drunk as a toast to, Israelites free, to the Israelites' freedom. And the bread mirrored the hastily prepared bread of the Israelites as they escaped from Egypt. In Luke 22, verses 14 through 20, it says, When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you, for I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this, is, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Would you pray with me? Dear Lord, we thank you for all the blessings you've given us, but at this specific time, Lord, we thank you mostly for the sacrifice you made, the life you led, and the examples that you have given us. And Lord, as we are commanded to remember each week through the Lord's Supper, we would now like to thank you for the bread which represents your broken body. And we ask that we partake of it and we do so in a manner pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you pray with me again? Dear Lord, we'd like to continue thanking you for this fruit of the vine, which represents the blood of Jesus, which was shed on, our, shed on the cross so that each of us might have the opportunity to live eternally with you. We pray that as we take of the cup, that we also do this in a manner well pleased in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. This concludes our Lord's Supper. In a few minutes, Jim will come back and he'll, uh, I think after a song, he'll uh, lead us in a closing prayer as well as praying for the, the giving and uh, how explain how we can give, um, whether it be through check today or from the Realm app. I do have a couple of announcements that's not listed on your, your handout. Let me, let me make sure I share this with you. Everyone should have a handout this morning. On the inside cover of your handout is the, uh, the news and events that are going on. If you would, make sure that you refer to that uh, daily. And if you don't attend these events, maybe you could be prayerful for these events. A couple of additions to that. I uh, want to keep Brenda Berry in your prayers. She's having some health problems. And also... Registration for Lads to Leaders Convention is open. Please fill out the registration forms so that we can accommodate everyone going. Forms are due before Christmas. See Colin if you have any questions. Uh, everybody knows Colin over here. Raise your hand just to make sure. There's Colin. Make sure. He said that uh, the registration open and, and things are beginning to fill up. So uh, we need to really get on that. Also, all ladies who have been been to Women of the Word or are interested in coming need to meet down front for a quick meeting following morning worship. And if you're not sure what that is, I suggest you come forward to that meeting and find out a little more about it for the ladies. I want to thank everyone for being in attendance today. If you're visiting with us again, make sure you fill out the yellow card or the a QR code, and plan on stick around for a minute so we can get to know you. Our closing song today will be number 255, 255, if you will. <laughs> I press 
also taught to, to lay by in store and to, to give of our means, and we're told that God loves a cheerful giver. We have that opportunity each week. We have boxes in the back. Uh, you can send a check in by mail, or you can, of course, give on the Rim app. Would you pray with me, please? Dear Lord, we thank you for all the many blessings you've given us, and Lord, as Gary said today, we are, we are a nation that had been blessed far and above other places in the world. And Lord, we ask that we take that opportunity to, to give back to you, to give to this church so that the, the elders may continue the work and lead us to continue the work of this church. And Lord, we just ask that you be with those today that are that are sick and can't be with us we ask that you especially this weekend lord that we keep our military personnel in our prayers and in our first responders lord we just ask that you help us to show our light by the lives that we live and that we show people through our actions every day that we that we are making the walk with you it's in jesus name we pray amen